In this video, we are going to use the second law statement, the second law entropy balance equation, the first law balance equation, and we will learn about the power cycles. Now, the power cycles are the devices that operate in cycle, that take heat, that generate work, but in order to operate in cycle, they have to discard some of the energy that they have taken in. Now, let's draw the simple block diagram. Power cycles are the devices that operate in cycles. So they start from state 1 and they finish at state 1. They absorb heat from a sink. They absorb, a, they absorb heat from a source. I'm sorry. There's a heat source. They absorb heat from this source. They generate work. But they have to discard some of the heat to a cold sink. in order to be able to operate in cycle. Now, let's perform the first law and the second law analysis on this cyclic process. The first law analysis goes as u1 minus u1, or delta u, is equal to 0. On the other side, I, my system is the cycle itself. On the other side, I have Q hot, I have Q cold, I have work. Work in general. Shaft work, surface boundary movement work, and so on and so forth. I'm not specifying what kind of work, but I'm saying that it's work. From the first law, I get the following. Q hot is equal to minus Q cold plus work. What comes in, goes out. What comes in, goes out. From, from the second law analysis, delta S, which is S. 1 minus S1 is equal to 0. And that is equal to Q hat over T hat Q cold over T cold Remember that when we are writing the balance equations, we are not differentiating the sign. The sign declares itself plus S generated. What is Q hot? It is Q cold plus shaft work. Or I can write Q cold in terms of Q hot minus Q cold is Q hot plus work. That way, I have taken Q cold to the other side of the equation. Now, I will substitute Q hot over T hot. Minus, I'm going to substitute for Q cold, minus Q hot plus work 
divided by t cold plus s generated is equal to zero. I will rearrange here. S generated is equal to Q hat over T cold. This minus became plus minus Q hat over T hat. This went to the other side as minus, and then I have plus work over t cold. The minus sign became plus. I will regroup q hat 1 over tc minus 1 over th. Plus work over T sub C is equal to S generated. Now let's invoke the reversibility condition. What was reversible? When entropy generation was equal to zero, the process was reversible. So let's look for the situation where S generation is equal to zero. Let's see if you're going to arrive at a meaningful answer. For the reversible cycle, entropy generation should be equal to zero. Let's see where it is going to take us. We're going to have Q sub H divided by, multiplied by 1 over T sub H minus 1 over T sub C to be equal to work over T sub C. I'm going to define a cycle efficiency This term is equal to what I obtain as a result of what I have placed in. I have placed into this cycle Q hat. So that should be in the denominator. What did I obtain? I obtained work. And of course, they are in opposing direction relative to the cycle. So I have to put a minus in front. And I will multiply this by 100 to get the percent efficiency. Now let's see whether I am going to relate that efficiency to the temperatures of the cycle. So I'm going to take Q hat, divide the work by Q hat, and I'm going to do some algebra. Let's see. This is going to be equal to T sub C. I'm going to put a minus in front because I need to put a minus for the work divided by uh, T sub C multiplied by multiplied by 1 over T sub H minus 1 over T sub C. All right. That minus sign takes care of the fact that T sub H is greater than T sub C and the reciprocal of it is smaller than T reciprocal of T sub C. Otherwise, this group is going to turn out to be negative. Now, let's carry out the algebra a little bit further. Minus T sub C times T sub C minus T sub H divided by T sub C times T sub H, cancelling to give us 
efficiency of an ideal power cycle which is reversible as T sub H minus T sub C divided by T sub H multiply by 100. This is an important This is an important parameter that gives us boundaries about the amount of maximum amount of energy we can extract by playing between two different temperatures. Now, there are a few conclusions that we are going to arrive at by looking at this efficiency expression. So let me write it in the middle of the board. efficiency of the ideal cycle, ideal cycle, and this ideal cycle is going to start to have a name in the next video, efficiency of the ideal cycle is going to be a function of the temperature difference between the source and the sink divided by the temperature of the hot source. Or it is going to be equal to 1 minus T cold over T hot multiplied by 100. Now, efficiency from this expression, efficiency increases as this temperature difference increases. The temperature difference is a very critical parameter on how much work that we can extract from a power cycle. The energy, the energy with the units of 1 kilojoules is going to change its value as a function of its temperature. In other words, 1 kilojoules at say 5000 Kelvin is going to be more valuable than energy at 1000 Kelvin. Why is that? Because if my energy, one calorie, is available to me at 5000 Kelvin, I can transfer that energy to any temperature below 5000 Kelvin. However, if energy is available to me only at 1000 Kelvin, my natural direction of the energy transfer starts at 1000 Kelvin and below. All right? So high temperatures are important in generating power from heat. Uh, in generating work from heat, the temperature difference is important. Of course, the temperature of the source is important as well as the temperature of the sink. But uh, the temperature of the sink is usually, unless you have a specific design, is usually uh, the lower limit of the temperature of the sink is room temperature. So we should be considering the source temperatures that are above room temperature uh, because our sink temperature is room temperature. Now let's take this ideal cycle it is going to be the next video's subject that this ideal cycle is going to be equivalent to a cycle that I will draw on a PV diagram. Or on a TS diagram. Now you see I'm using entropy. As a state variable now, just like P and B, I have T and S as state variables. This cycle is going to be equivalent to a reversible isothermal expansion reversible adiabatic expansion, reversible 
isothermal compression and reversible adiabatic compression of an ideal gas in a piston and cylinder assembly. I repeat, a reversible isothermal expansion, reversible adiabatic expansion, reversible isothermal compression, and reversible adiabatic compression. This is state one, this is state one. This is state two, this is state two. State three, state three, state four, state four. All right, those are my states. And as such represented, this cycle is called the Carnot cycle. Carnot cycle will have the same efficiency, but we are going to calculate the efficiency of the Carnot cycle by calculating heat and work interactions that are going through this process. <laughs>